All right, guys, we got an exciting video today. We are looking at the new North Arms Skaha 2. Just got mine in yesterday and wanted to do a quick first impressions video. I hadn't handled one of these knives before, but they've had a lot of hype, uh, mostly thanks to Nick Shabazz in his video on the original one. And I've heard that, you know, I've heard really good things about them. So when they opened their books up again and made some changes, we'll go over what the changes are here. I had to get on, on the pre-order, so I got it. And here it is. So, what they come with is basically the knife in a, I mean, it came just like in a shipping box with a um, little plastic cover on the knife. You had your business cards for Mike and J Michael and John, their father and son, which is really cool. These knives are made up in British Columbia. You get the knife. In this case, I got the Royal Blue G10. And then you get like a little uh, note here basically telling you. Um, congratulations on owning a Skaha, your quick specs, your usage, how to basically open and shut the knife, which is interesting. <laughs> Sharpening, um, cleaning it, and basically how to properly use the knife. One thing that I really like, I'm going to point out here, they did. So it tells you the type of blade still, which is a S35. Um, G10 on the handles, obviously. It says the blade hardness, they're running the, their ZT, or their ZT. <laughs> their S35 from 59 to 61 hardness, and... What I really love here is they put the cutting edge inclusive at 30 degrees. So they, they put this all the way down to 15 degrees per side. That is pretty awesome that they not only were, you don't see that much on, on, on production knives. Most of the time you're going to get a 15 degree edge. You're going to be doing that custom on a Wicked Edge or a, a Kami or something like that. So produce like that's awesome. And I love that they tell you that because when you go to resharpen this knife, you know what the degree is, and then you can just put it on your Wicked Edge, your thing, and use your angle cube, and, you know, I bet it's not exactly 15 degrees, but that's pretty awesome. You have a very easy place to start. You can do the sharp. I would still do the Sharpie trick, but you don't have to sit and guess for, you know, 20 minutes trying to figure out what the angle is. That's really nice. I really appreciate that. Okay, so why are these so popular? Well, they're a sub-$200 knife. I think I paid $186 for this. It is up $15 from the last time they sold them. I think they were like $171. Um, they are pretty basic G10. Um, you got flipper, CNC machined. You can see the CNC machine marks on the blade. And they are a liner lock. I mean, and what, this, there's just not a lot to them, right? Well, they're lightweight. They're a good size. And But what really sets them apart, I think, is this action. The D10 is incredible on these knives. Now check out this action. Boop. It is so incredible. This is no, this is out of the box smoothness, guys. This is not me oiling it, anything. That is the action out of the box. It is, it is crazy. If I can get that thumb out of the way, it'll fall fast. Um, the only knife I've ever had that had this quick of an action was, wasn't even mine, was a um, Grimsmo Norseman, also a Canadian based company. Maybe they know what they're doing up there, huh? Look at that. You can flip it from any direction. It's such a good detent, and then it just falls shut. I think this is maybe more impressive action-wise because the blade is a lot smaller, and it's lighter. Um, the Grimsmo has a pretty heavy and big blade. This is quite a bit smaller on your blade size there. I think we're around we're over three inches, three and a quarter, three and a half on your blade length. Eh, about three and a half if you count the flipper tab your cutting edge is about three inches exactly so not a very big blade also not a very thick blade I don't remember the blade thickness on the Norseman off the top of my head I don't have it it's actually, it was a buddy of mine and he actually sold his 0 .0945 inches thick let's go to the thickest part here which is right here and it's still 0 .0945 inches thick very thinly very thin, and then the thinnest behind the edge, maybe a little skewed because of that CNC machining, but 0 .017, you're kidding me. Holy cow, this is gonna be the slicer. So it's very thin behind the edge, it's got thin blade stock, it's gonna be a slicer, so that's awesome. So not a very thick blade, not a very big blade, and yet it has that kind of action, ridiculous. So let's go over what the changes are on the knife. So they offered it in multiple colors, G10 before. Natural, you had blue. I don't know if, I think they added a few colors. I think blue might have been in the new colors. They have orange, black, all kinds of different options. 
Uh, the few changes they made are, um, for one, the most obvious change is the pocket clip. These never had a wire clip before. They had a different style clip that was not, it was, it was, it worked, it functioned. A lot of people liked it, some people hated it. And it stopped them from buying the knife, you know, whatever. So they went with a wire deep carry clip, very similar to a Spyderco. Perfect, works awesome. So it's got a great pocket clip. They also changed the flipper tab. It was larger on the original, it's smaller now. It's also chamfer. And you have jimping. I, I don't know if the jimping's any different or not, um, since I don't have the other one. But the other uh, big change here, you can see here, is the sharpening choil. The, on the original, is much smaller than this. This is a very generous sharpening choil, which is well appreciated um, from knife lovers. So they definitely made some good changes to this knife. Um, and all of them are directed towards the user, which is fantastic. I'm trying to think. Oh, the other thing that... Um, that I've heard is different here, and I don't you know, like I said, I don't have the original, but the jimping here is changed a little bit, and it's a little bit more aggressive now, which some people might not like. It, it is pretty aggressive, and I'm not gonna say it's too aggressive because it really locks your thumb in there, but it could be a little less. But you can take you know, um, some maybe a little sandpaper, sand that down if you wanted to, no big deal. But so those are some just some of the main minor changes to this knife. It is a $15 increase in price. But um, if it were me and they sold both of them, I would go for this one simply because of the few uh, upgrades like to the sharpening choil and to the, the clip especially. Because I know the action and everything I think is just about the same as it is. And one thing to note here, which is pretty cool on this knife, is that it's just G10 on one side. This is a solid G10 scale. No liner. The only liner on this side is your lock, you know, your lock bar. And it's attached to the scale through the pocket clip screw. Which is pretty interesting. So... Very simple, easy construction. Your handle, um, let's go over your handle length closed here, is right about four inches long uh, for your handle. Maybe a little higher, maybe four and almost not quite four and a quarter, four and an eighth inches long. And it's thin. It does. One thing that's really nice about the scales is they kind of flare out here in the middle. Um, they're very contoured and rounded, kind of like a bushcraft um, knife, not that to that degree, but very comfortable in the hand because of that. It's a little over five inches. Now, if you go all the way down, you're going to get 0.6 inches wide. Um, but, it, like I said, tapers. So up here... It's only 0.56, but it goes down a little bit. So it's a little bit wider, um, not bad, not at all. It feels super comfortable in the hand. The ergonomics are fan flipping tastic on this thing. Just great ergonomics. Very neutral handle design. I've been saying that a lot in my videos, but one thing I've noticed on some of these knives is that they go a little crazy with the handle design and the, the contours don't always fit everyone's hand. So this is very neutral. It should fit anyone's hand. The other very popular thing about this knife is how lightweight it is. Which makes it a perfect EDC knife. Three ounces on the dot. So very lightweight for its size. Thing oil light. Let's see what's a comparable size knife. Uh, the Kaiser T1 I think is pretty comparable. Let's see. Yep, those are about the same size. Almost identical. How much is the Kaiser weigh? Well, it's going to be more more heavier because it's titanium, so it's hard to compare. Um, the ZT609, a little bit smaller knife. About the same weight though. The 562, bigger knife. Not a uh, huge, um, not a great comparison because it's a bigger knife, but just to kind of give you an idea of the size. So it's smaller than the 562. It's about the same size as the, the uh, T1. And I brought this blade in, this Booze Blade Smoke, because it reminds me of a lot of this blade. You're going to be like, what? That's not even close to the same. It's a front flipper. It's titanium. It's manufactured in China by Wee Knives. But where it has similarities is that these knives, the one I would say downside to these, both of these knives, is they're not easily obtainable. The Booze Blade Smoke is no longer made. Um, he'll probably, he may do another run when he does, does runs. They're really short runs. And they're manufactured by Wee Knives, and it's incredibly smooth, and one of my favorite knives in my collection, right? But you can't just readily go out and buy it. They don't sell them at Blade HQ. They don't sell them at Knife Center. You know, you have to go through Booze Blades when he does a run. 
Same with the Skaha too. It's a very popular knife and it's not very available. And there's this two man shop though. I mean, you're getting, I want to call it a custom knife because it's not, but it's very high quality production made in small quantities. <laughs> kind of like a, um, well, a booze blades, a Chris Reeve, a few that come to mind. Um, they're made, you know, they're not made in big quantities. They may not be as easy to get. So that is the one downside is that not everyone can just go buy one if you want one. You have to get on the pre-order list. It's got a nice balance, um, which is up right now for the next run. And they get through them pretty quick, guys. I didn't wait too long for this knife to show up, and I was like the 164th or something like that in line, which is crazy. So something to consider. You can't get it right away. You can't just go on their website and buy one right now because the demand is so high. Nick Shabazz's first video on this knife made it super popular. And it since then has blown up for them, which is great for their business, and I'm sure they love it. Um, I'm th here to tell you that it's worth the wait. It's worth getting on the, the wait list. Um, I haven't even had the knife two days, and I can already tell you that I'm going to love it, and it's going to be one of my top carried knives. I can't find any problems with it at all, any dislikes. Maybe the jimping being a little too aggressive. You could fix that pretty easily, though. Um, I love the color G10. I think it's fantastic. I love how thin the, the blade is, how thinly grounded it is, how thin behind the edge it is. Going to be a great slicer, a great user knife. So right into my EDC rotation right away. Got the deep carry pocket clip. But the way that... Getting out my jeans here. The way that it's positioned on the knife, though, um, it's not going to be a deep carry, deep, deep carry. You're going to still have that much knife hanging out. But that wire clip works so well, man. It's one of the better designs in the industry, in my opinion. I think the Chris Reeve Sabenza has the best clip ever. I'd say the wire style clip is the second because <laughs> it just works really well. So it's not going to be deep, deep carry. You're going to have a little knife sticking out, but it does carry pretty deeply because of that clip. I think it, much more than the original uh, in my, is my understanding. So first impressions are fantastic on the Skaha 2, guys. I would recommend getting on the wait list if you can for the next batch. They're worth it. It's sub $200, but the quality is there. The action is freaking amazing. I don't think, I can't think of a knife that has better action than this right now. I've got some Wii knives on loan right now, doing some reviews that are really good on the action. ZTs always have a, a good detent. But see, you got to kind of shake that to shut it, right? Uh, same with like this Kaiser. You know, you kind of got to give it a little shake. To get it shut. Uh, another ZT. The 609 I have doesn't have the best action. The smoke is pretty close. I think Wii is the closest. Yeah. But, I mean, none of them even come close. It just falls. And it's not, like I said, I said earlier, it's a thinly ground blade. It's not thick. It's not heavy. It's not four inches of steel. It's light and it still has that good of an action. And there's literally no blade play. Nothing. And the detent is very crisp. You can hear there. So, fantastic flipper, guys. I had to recommend getting on the list for the Skaha, too. I know there's another wait list going on right now. I don't know if they're going to change how they do their ordering or not. You know, just because their demand is so high right now, they can hardly keep up. But thanks for watching, guys. My first impressions on the Skaha, too. Any questions and comments, leave them down below. And we will see you on the next video.